Hi everyone, how's it going? It's been a while since I made a video on this channel because I've been kind of busy. I mean, it's been Christmas and New Year. By the way, I hope you had a good one. Can't believe it's 2019 already, crazy. And now I'm going to make my first video of the year and it's going to be about professional 360 cameras, pro level cameras that are used for, you know, high quality video, the highest quality video possible to shoot in VR for VR headsets. And the reason I'm doing that is because the kind of landscape has changed since the last video I made. I mean, I think that was over a year ago made that. Okay, the first camera I'm going to talk about is the Insta360 Titan, which was literally just announced like a few few days ago. Now, the Insta360 Titan can shoot 11K 360 video and 10K 360 video in 3D. So, basically, the top resolution is 11K, which is outstanding, like one of the best I've ever seen so far, and it can shoot 10K if you want the 3D effect, which is pretty good for a VR headset. It makes it kind of slightly more immersive. Really interestingly, it, it can also shoot 5.2K 360 video at 120 frames per second, which is pretty much slow motion. It's very kind of quiet, extreme slow motion. And I think that's going to be really, really cool to try out because I've always thought that slow motion and 360 work really well together because one of the complaints is that people can't, don't have enough time to look everywhere and see what's going on. But if it's in slow motion, I think that'll be really cool to see things slowly moving around you. Anyway, I think that'll be really good. I hope it works as well as they say. Uh, but I think the main thing about the Insta360 Titan that puts it out there and makes it ahead of especially the other Insta360 cameras, but also perhaps most other professional 360 cameras, is the fact that it uses micro four thirds lenses. These lenses are more like what you would find in a DSLR. I mean, I'm using a micro four thirds lens here in this video and you know they it, the quality is quite good the quality of these lenses is going to be much better than the kind of standard lenses used in most other 360 cameras i mean it's very very good quality the uh, bit rate is high but it's just the detail the detail there's no fuzziness there's very little noise it just looks much clearer and that's because of the quality of the lenses not necessarily just because it's a high resolution. Even if you look at the low light video, which is where Micro Four Thirds lens is gonna shine the most, the, the difference is stark. In the video shot with the Titan, the, there is hardly any noise. It's so smooth, like there's no, even in the darkest places, it looks really, really good. Whereas compared to the other video that they shot with, you can see there's a lot of noise there, even though it's high resolution, a lot of noise, and it's just not quite as clear. And it also comes with a flow state stabilization, which is Insta360's patented, like, uh, stabilization software which works really really well in the other cameras and completely smooths out moving video especially if you're just walking around with it and for this such a large camera to have that it's really quite special you can see here what it looks like it seems to be working pretty well however it's going to cost quite a lot it costs fifteen thousand dollars and yeah it's among the most expensive out there right now but it is seems to be among the best obviously it's not been released yet so nobody's actually tried it and no one's actually used it yet but by april it will be released but either way it looks set to be very good and insta360 have a good track record of making high quality cameras that can shoot very good quality video okay moving on and we're up to another Insta360 camera, the Insta360 Pro 2, so obviously the second generation of their Pro level cameras, which is a lot cheaper than the Titan, it's only $5,000, and I think it's probably going to be like the workhorse of the Pro VR video world, I mean it's just got so many features, it's got really good quality video, not as good as the Titan, but or, but still pretty good, it can shoot 8K 360 video in 3D, and the a really high bit rate, 120 megabits per second, it's got this flow state stabilization as well, so super smooth if you want to move around with it. In low light, you are going to see the difference. It won't work quite as well as in low light situations. But in the daytime, if you are in a well-lit environment, the quality is really good and more than good enough for shooting for a VR headset like the Oculus Go. If you wanted to shoot for that format, it will look very good on a VR headset, much better than, you know, the standard cheaper 360 camera. It also has some features which basically are designed for VR filmmakers. For example, they got this video preview system called Farsight. Um, you'll see these antennas sticking out of the camera and that basically is to allow you to record or preview and control the camera from an iPad or a phone from, I mean, hundreds of feet away. You don't need to be anywhere near the camera when it's rolling so you don't get in the way of the shot. For this camera, you can go very, very far away and or even very high up and it will still be able to record. You'll be able to preview the image and control it. They also have this proxy for Adobe Premiere Pro which allows you to edit um, directly from the camera straight in Adobe and then when you stitch it together, it will also include all of those edits that you make and stitch together at the same time so it kind of takes out 
some workflow, which what you would otherwise have to do on other cameras. It just makes this the whole workflow more streamlined. Insta360 are really trying to make it e as easy as possible to shoot pro level VR video with the Insta360 Pro 2. I mean, I've seen it and I've played around with this Farsight and the, it worked really well and all the options were really good. And I saw live previews of the uh, image and it was very, very sharp, very, very clear. And there are some obviously preview images out there now. People have used it. It's out available now. You can check the link below to see where you can get it. Um, yeah, it looks really good. It is certainly among the best. Um, it's among the easiest to use and it has among the most features on any pro level VR camera that I've seen. Okay, so there is one more Insta360 camera I'm gonna talk about and it's the original Insta360 Pro, which is still, uh, I mean, it's a, it's not old now. I mean, it's about a year and a half, maybe two years old. It's still really good. It can still shoot really sharp, good quality, 360 video, in fact, in 8K as well. However, the bit rate is lower. It doesn't have this far sight. It doesn't have all these extra features. It is updated quite often as well as the other cameras, but it doesn't have this extra hardware and it doesn't have a high bit rate. So the video quality isn't quite as good. But for the price, it's had a price cut. It's around about $3,000. $400, which for what you get is actually really good. If you're gonna be shooting professional VR video and being paid to do so, you know, you're gonna be trying to make money out of VR. Uh, that investment isn't that much and you will get high quality VR enough for shooting professional productions uh, to view on a VR headset. I mean, I've seen the BBC using this camera. I've seen CNN, um, National Geographic, the Discovery Channel have all used the Pro to shoot high quality professional video. And if you can't afford the more expensive versions of the Insta360 range, this will be a good place to start at least. Okay, moving away from Insta360 onto a different brand. This one is called the Pilot Error. I mean, I'm still not sure if I'm saying that right. Error, is it Error? Pilot Error. Anyway, yeah, this camera is being released very soon. In fact, they are going to send me one to t check out, to test in the next month or so. I think you'll, you may see some other guys have already got one, but I was very busy over Christmas, over New Year, and I just didn't have time to test another camera. So I'm gonna get it a bit later, but I will promise to take it to some cool places and test it out. But anyway, it's kind of a bit of a game changer. It's certainly disrupting the market um, in terms of pro level VR cameras. Well, for a start, it looks pretty weird. As you can see, for a start, it's got a giant touch screen, LCD touch screen right on the camera itself. So you can preview video, um, access some apps, some features, some editing, just view panoramas, view video, view photos straight from the camera itself. However, the most interesting thing about this camera is the fact that it can instantly stitch its own 8K video in the camera itself. So you do not have to put it into a laptop or a PC or a desktop to do that. It will do it inside the camera. It's got its own processor, its own RAM. So it's basically like a mini computer as well as a professional 360 camera. And that will also take out some workflow, allow you to access the video files instantly and yeah, get them off the camera instantly. The Pilot Arrow will be able to shoot 8K 360 video. It will also be able to live stream and it has 4G capability. So you can live stream using 4G or connect it in somewhere where you don't have Wi-Fi. I mean, yeah, if that's something you might be interested in, check it out. But yeah, it will be released in the next few months. And like I said, I'm gonna be getting this camera and testing it out. So I will do a full kind of review and tell you how it goes, how it is actually like in real life. Now I'm gonna move on to two cameras now because they are essentially the same. I mean, they're the same company, they're just slightly different, but basically they're called the Kandao Obsidian S and the Kandao Obsidian R. Now, basically uh, you can see what they look like here. Now, basically the difference between them is that the Obsidian S can shoot 6K 360 video at 60 frames per second, as well as 4K video at 120 frames per second. And the Obsidian R can shoot 8 8K video, but at only up to 30 frames per second. So it basically would depend how you're gonna use it. Now these cameras are about $7,000 each, and they can shoot, like I said, up to either 8K, 6K or 4K. The video quality seems to be really good. It shoots at about 100 megabits per second, which is very high, very good quality video. Now I've never actually used either of these cameras, so I can't really go into my opinion of it too much. I mean, the video quality looks good. I can see from the specs that you can live stream in 4K. It has its own power adapter, so you can plug it in for a long time. So if you wanted to live stream for hours and hours and hours, you could do that because you have access to a power supply. Now my final camera that I'm gonna talk about, and there are actually more professional cameras out there, but I just wanna give you a quick overview of what I think are the top ones out right now. So this is my final one, and it's the Zcam S1 Pro. Now this is another 360 camera that comes with micro four thirds lenses, and they are also really good, really good for shooting in low light. I've used this video, nope. I've used this camera to shoot low light video before, and it worked really, really well much better than any other 360 camera I've tried. Now it is $7,000, so again, it's not cheap, but you do get very high quality video at 6K, not 8K, but 6K. Like I said, 
Resolution isn't everything. The lenses are more important. How the lenses do with light and color are much more important than just resolution. 6K is still very good and more than enough to view on a VR headset or maybe you would want to create it for YouTube and Facebook in which case it is more than enough. Yeah, so I've used this camera. I mean, it is a little bit of a learning curve to get the batteries. I mean, it's not the easiest camera to use to set up either. However, once you do, it works really well and the video coming out of it looks amazing. Okay guys, so I guess that's it. I just wanted to give you a really quick run through of the state of play in the professional 360 camera world. Now obviously I play with a lot of 360 cameras quite a lot but I'm usually not often the professional ones more you know these consumer cheaper ones however I have used the professional ones on occasion and yeah so I do know what is important and what is not and how to use them and what the struggles are for shooting professional 360 videos so I think out of all of the ones that are available right now or ones that are coming out soon these, I think, five or six that I mentioned are probably going to suit pretty much anyone who wants to get started in professional VR. Um, if you are interested in 360 cameras and video in general, then subscribe because I have got, uh, you know, more coming up in 2019, hopefully. You can also check out my website, 360cameras.com. In the description, I have a post with all of these cameras uh, with example videos, with the specs, with a kind of just an overview of what they can do. So if you wanted to read more about these cameras, check out that post below. Otherwise, I will see you next time. I hope you enjoyed this video. Bye.